I've been kind of all over the map, um, but I'm really excited about what I do now. So it's kind of nice to see I studied textiles. I went into something kind of completely different. So I had almost, you know, it was a new category at Coach. I, you know, I knew it was something that I could do. I could apply my skills from school and, you know, what we were doing there. And then, yeah, but that was completely outside of what I was focused on. And then was able to, you know, once you're kind of in, you're like, well, I do this. And this is like, obviously my, what I studied and um, like what I really want to be doing. And then um, was able to transition there. So do you guys have questions about this and how it applies to what you guys are learning or what you're studying or anything? Well, oh, don't be quiet. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. So I'll ask a question. Thank Can I ask you. a question? Okay, so um, part of my role at LaSalle is talking to students about um, internships. So can you expand a little bit um, on your um, textiles, portfolio textiles internship? So that, yes. Um, so obviously that was my first industry experience so I and also my first New York kind of experience which was crazy because being from a small town I never really went to New York when I was I guess that age and then I just went for it lived there loved it fell in love with it and then obviously ended up applying but um, to my first job in New York but um, portfolio was interesting because I so in school, which you'll see, I have some school stuff actually. We did a lot of hand painting and that was kind of what I, how I learned. So like a lot of the repeats that I was doing, like all hand done, like not a lot of computer generated stuff at all. <clears throat> so when I went over there, I'm like, oh God, like everything was done on the computer. They had a lot of CAD designers and there was this one little old lady who sat in the back and she was the hand painter and she did this little thing and I was like, oh wow, so that's not really how it works. So the stuff, as much as obviously you learn all these things in college, it's great and you're doing them, but then when you're actually in the industry, I'm like, oh shoot, like I gotta, I gotta get with it quick. So our senior year, we ended up learning a lot um, in technology, so just learning a lot of the computer software and the things that I actually needed to apply to the job. But yeah, so that was interesting. But I was there one intern. It was a smaller studio. They owned a bigger, so it was um, home furnishings, which I did a lot of. So I actually didn't really. I took fashion classes, but I didn't really take. Um, I didn't know if I was going to go more home furnishings or apparel or um, fashion. So I did a lot of home furnishings, didn't really focus on fashion in school, and then really ended up going fashion, but portfolio was home furnishings, so doing a lot of upholstery fabrics and, um, yeah, upholstery fabrics, wall coverings, that kind of stuff. Um, so it was interesting, small, um, but a great experience, and then obviously just being able to meet people in the industry and you have those contacts and meeting anybody, like, that's, Kind of what you want to do, talk to everybody, meet people, everybody knows everybody, the industry is so small, it ends up seeming, so um, a lot of, there's a lot of crossover, so I think that's kind of a good thing to remember, <clears throat> but yeah, so. So how did you, how did you get that internship? So a lot of our students are thinking right now about summer internships and about fall that and that process. So I think I probably went through the same process. Actually, I think it was my, um, yeah, one of my printing pattern professors, she knew these people. We, I mean, even, like, it was kind of the same thing in our class. We would have guest speakers come in and talk about their jobs. So kind of alumni, people who would come in, they would talk about, you know, what they were doing. I do remember this one woman, she was from Martha Stewart. She came in and she was doing, um, just, she was designing dishes or something, I'm like, cool, you can literally do anything. I'm like, I don't even know what I want to do. So um, she, so this woman, my professor, got me in touch with this industry, this person, and then we were able to make that connection, um, which was cool. So obviously, using your professors and people just 
locally in the area, and then obviously Converse has a great internship program, so we accept interns all the time, and it's definitely something to consider if you're looking into that. But yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I have a question. Um, yeah. Moving from like coach to Converse, what do you mean to go to Converse? Like, why not? Uh, so like Nike or some other brand, like, why Converse? Converse? is, I mean, just a brand I've always been kind of drawn to. Being at Coach, it was so, I don't want it like strict is the wrong word, but it was so, it's like when you're in fashion and apparel, it's, it's very cutthroat and you know, it's a lot and put a lot of time, you'll see some of the projects that I worked on, but a lot of hours and I feel like I was so focused on the fashion apparel and handbags and kind of that aspect inside of the industry that I, I needed to do something different. And it was still apparel, but, way more chill. I'm like, you know, it's more street style, it's more, it's just like complete different vibes, kind of runway and then street. I kind of just wanted a something different. So definitely different. <coughs> Still a lot of work. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Alright. So I'll show you. So I have a few projects. I mean this is definitely way more visual, but so when I was at Coach, obviously I was doing handbags first, and then I went to, well yeah, both design technology first, and then I went into the art studio and I was doing a lot of stuff in outlet, a lot of stuff in line, but focusing on handbags. And then I, I don't know how, but kind of when you're, when you're working and obviously things are changing, positions are evolving, and you're kind of, you're just switching all the time. So. <clears throat> I ended up in scarves. I'm not a scarf developer or, you know, but just kind of when you're in it, you learn so much and so fast. So everything's kind of happening. And so then I ended up scarf designing and then segued into when we launched, um, when we got our new creative director, he wanted to be obviously more fashion focused and kind of more on the runway and like obviously bring the coach to such a different place than it was a long time ago. Um, so I was able to work on, so this 1941 apparel collection was one of kind of the first collections that we were able to show at Fashion Week, so that was really exciting to be a part of. And it was just like a completely different atmosphere. It's like it went from being, you know, way more relaxed and a bit more chill to this kind of like high intensity of, you know, you guys are, are you guys, what are, what are your majors? Fashion? Fashion Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, just the, the intensity level definitely went up, but very exciting. And so these are some of the prints that I was able to work on. So a lot just in terms of trend and color. <clears throat> um, at this point, it's kind of, you know, design director led. Um, and working with our concept, internal concept team. So we have our trend team internally, so them kind of partnering and coming up with this um, like prairie western vibe that we were going for, and we knew that we wanted it to be <clears throat> definitely like heavy on the florals. So they came back with a lot of vintage samples and just kind of this whole vibe of what we were going to try to go for. And then this was a lot of cleaning artwork and scaling and recoloring and so partnering with our color team and kind of getting to this place but this I mean this is just a small amount of kind of what was translated to the actual garments so being able to be a part of this process also showed me because we're printing on so many different materials so it's kind of like every print needs to be altered for each material that you're printing on depending on what the base is so this was definitely eye-opening for me because I was so used to printing on Granted, I had like I had the scarf kind of you know segue into this, but this was definitely a lot for me in terms of understanding what goes into the you know different printing qualities and techniques and um, a lot of stuff that went into to the fashion aspect of this. Yeah. So were you like doing the printing, or did you kind of make the design and send it over to somewhere, and maybe the printing you get it back? Yeah, so we work with our development team, so we would come up with a print. So this is also when you learn how prints are broken into screens, or how you're printing, whether you're printing um, screen printing, or sublimating, or digital printing, you're learning a lot about costs, a lot of stuff that I was, you know, you're not, you're not necessarily 
learning in real time of like you know what actually goes into each part of the process. So you're learning so much along the way. Um, but yeah, so coming up with the print, working with our development partners, and then at this point it was kind of it's a lot of back and forth. So them telling us whether you know what the screen limitations are because you're working within a certain screen size, or um, it's definitely a lot of back and forth with them, but they're kind of, it goes, you're working with a lot of people all the time. There's a lot of cross-functional partners. You're always working with your merchandisers. You're always working with your development partners. But um, yeah, so they're the ones who, would, who talk to the factory. So they'll send out the artwork and kind of be that in between, liaison between the factory and, and us. And then we'll get the information and then tweak accordingly. Which on the scarf side, I did all that on my by myself. So I was doing that part, so I kind of have the full breadth of everything, kind of each part, and a lot goes into it. But but yeah, this was definitely a really fun project and kind of just segue into just being out there and being on the runway. So that was fun. Oh, and then I do have some scarves. So so these were some scarves that I created. Um, and then it's just, as you saw kind of those florals above, when I, so we kind of start at Coach, this is kind of how we did, we ended up, when we would introduce kind of something that went to the runway, we would then take it in line, so some of these florals, <clears throat> like the florals that you just saw, I took that and kind of manipulated it and did something different with it, so then it could go in online stores like, through a different lens, through a different filter, but still kind of having that for that consumer and then applying our seasonal color to that. So that floral and then this kind of skull. There was another runway show that we did <clears throat> that was a lot darker, a bit more, um, it was like biker kind of darker. I don't know if any of you have seen it, but these skulls and that kind of came from there. So this is kind of a navy and more multi-take on it. So being able to kind of take some things that existed and translating it for <clears throat> just a different consumer. Um, and then this, because I mean, now I don't even know how many years it's been since I've been there, but I did this. Um, we have the coach kind of horse and carriage that I made into kind of this like interlocking, and I did this as a jacquard scarf. And then now I'm like, oh, it's funny when stuff comes back, because now it's back. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I remember that one. So. They just released it in their handbags because this was a scarf exclusive at the time. So now it's printed on a lot of the bags. Which is, it's just exciting to see when you see something. It's like, ah. Or like, I'll like be getting my nails done and someone will walk by and I'll see a print I did. I'm like, oh, that's so funny. <laughs> it's just fun to see your stuff. Or like, someone will have a thing. I'm like, oh, I did that. <laughs> I know that's like what the point is, but it's just so funny when you see it. <laughs> so those are the scarves. Okay, so now... Can I ask a question, yeah. Christina? Sorry to interrupt yes, you. Please. So, um... I thought the comment about translating product for different consumer segments was interesting. So at Coach, where were you getting that information? Were you just drawing that from your own intel and understanding? Or was there information coming from somewhere in the company? What did that look like? So that's definitely was driven from our merchandising partners. So our merch partners would basically brief us. So I think just kind of knowing what came from the runway and what we wanted to elaborate on and what we kind of wanted our narrative to be just in terms of like kind of seasonally outward facing for inline product. They would brief us, so we get a brief and then they would kind of <coughs> tell us what to do. Obviously not, you know, we have the, the design creative license to do what we want to do and work with our color teams and everything, but it's definitely merch led. So yeah, because at Coach we had merchandising which we're so close to the merchandising partners but at Converse it's a little bit different because between merchandising we have product line managers so they kind of manage all the merchandise up front and kind of we have so much product footwear is a wild it's crazy so I've never seen this much just internally on the footwear side because this is also newer to me so I'll get to kind of what I'm doing now but um, 
it's it's kind of it's just crazy to keep track of. So we have product line managers and then merchandising. So we have kind of two partners there. So that's it's a little interesting. It's different, a different way of working because I'm used to before working with just merchandising. So there's kind of another layer of people who kind of keep everything buttoned up and tight and package it and then present to merchandising. So, but yeah. So this is commerce apparel. So going from Coach, I went straight to apparel and Converse, not touching any footwear, which was also interesting because I started in the New York office and obviously footwear is in the Boston office, so there was definitely a bit of a disconnect there. It's hard to work when you're in New York, you're all working together as a team, but then there's also a huge, what the company is and known for, um, you know, the product is here in Boston, so that was kind of hard. We were flying back and forth a lot which would have been very interesting given this virus situation because yeah. we were back and forth all the time just kind of trying to make sure we were aligned and for certain meetings and milestones so um, that was interesting but yeah so these were some of the um, where I partnered with the incubate team so some of these projects came from footwear so we worked with Miley um, RC Pet, P Gallery, Rocket, Suicidal Tendencies, so many more people um, but yeah, and I just did like a little bit more recently, I think with Millie Bobby Brown. I don't get to meet them, but <laughs> you get to collaborate with them. So in this case, because usually it's leadership-led um, direction and color will kind of come and trickle down from those leaders. But when we work with collaborators like this, they're kind of driving the, the creative direction. So um, Miley, with Miley, this print started as a tiny footwear print, so then I had to kind of blow up all the motifs, make it this big bandana print, so something that could be for apparel. So she had this whole line, we were able to work on a multi, like there were a few prints in this collection, so that was cool. I like doing stuff this like this, because I like, we're obviously, I'm creating artwork, I do a lot of the creative part, but I also like to be able to kind of just take the pieces, you're making the collection, you're working with everybody on your team, so this is kind of just an exciting part of the process too. Um, so the RSVP gallery, that jersey, those again were small elements, I think it might have even just been a lining and footwear, I forget how they applied it, but then just being able to take that and make more of an engineered print for the jersey. And then for Rocket, I did these, um, the front and the back is different, it's kind of hard to see, but these kind of diffused plaids. And then Suicidal Tendencies, we were able to take their <coughs> um, flyers and use their band artwork and make an all over repeat for, for a few pieces for them. So this is obviously a different part of the industry within internally too because we have our incubate team and then we have our inline apparel so and I was doing men's and women's but this and collaborating is it's fun and there's visuals there's a lot of pictures so it's a little bit more visually exciting to add to um but yeah so that's apparel print you guys have questions about this does anybody do Yes. Yeah. Did you do you like doing apparel print more or prints for footwear? Because I know it can be very different. It's so different. I I would have had no idea had I. So when I was doing the apparel stuff, I was doing technically my role, which just became kind of blurred and confusing. I was doing all over print. So they would take some of my all over prints and then just apply it to footwear. But the footwear team was doing that, so it just kind of everything all over was coming through me. But then we have a graphics department. So those things kind of became blurry because it like some prints would turn into graphics, so who owns it? And you know, there was just kind of a, so now I love footwear, which is so funny. I didn't think I would love it as much, but smaller real estate, but in terms of the graphics and just being around, being able to play on, you know, you know what you're working with. So it's kind of, it's fun because you can do whatever you want within reason <laughs> and there's definitely a lot of costing limitations but yeah but I do love footwear now it's awesome I still do apparel focus though on on footwear but yeah does anybody here do print pattern it's just me um okay and 
then. Yeah, so this is. Um, okay, that's just going to stay like that. Um, so, kind of just limited with what I can actually show in terms of what we use internally, but this is kind of how I, I would start my print and graphic inspiration. So, at the beginning of a season, which we're kind of, I'm like almost at the tail end now, but um, the beginning of each season internally, we get this creative brief. Our, our creative, our directors and leaders, leadership team will create a seasonal narrative. So it's pretty much it's company wide in the beginning, and everybody is listening to this presentation, getting all the information, and kind of the, what we should be designing towards. So you're getting your theme, you're getting kind of overall, you know, over color palette, and just some little bits. So we'll get kind of a toolkit to work from. So from there, we take that information and kind of simultaneously. Merchandising is working on their briefs, <clears throat> and then we as designers are able to kind of get out in the market, um, if budget allows, and travel. So these are just kind of a few um, inspiration images that I was able to take from Chicago and Berlin. So um, when we travel, it's it's a lot of obviously getting out into the market, so kind of seeing what's out there, a lot of talking to our consumers, just seeing kind of getting a read, a pulse check on what everybody is kind of into, what people are wearing, it's a lot of taking photos and just gathering anything you can and sometimes you kind of don't even know what you're doing when you're taking photos and you get back and you're like, oh, okay, this is a thing, so you know, this is something that we can kind of build on, but yeah, so from just kind of a trip, you know, we went to a few museums in Berlin, um, that's me in the light and doing something at a museum in Chicago, and then a lot of street art, I'm always, um, uh, but yeah, I'm, like, I'm always inspired by wallpaper, I think it's just, it's deeply rooted in my, I really love, obviously, the, the home aspect of what I, what I used to do, I think, in school, but um, but yeah, patches and just other kind of museum things, and then I was at a karaoke bar, and um, this is actually the Converse entrance office in Berlin, so we stopped there for a bit, but just street art and taking a lot of photos is where I start, and then kind of build from there, but then we'll come back, regroup, everybody works really close together, so we work with our design leader, our footwear partners who are building the footwear models, me as the print graphics designer, we have our color people, we have our materials people, so we all come together as a tight group, kind of talk through things, what inspired us, like what we want to build and what we want to do, and um, yeah, so that's kind of the, well that part of the process, and then I start designing, and then I use my color partner the most, so color and materials as I'm kind of working through things, we just kind of see what we can achieve, and what models we're going to work on, and then I'll get a specific brief from my um, merchandising partners. And I mean, on one graphic brief, I can sometimes have 19 SKUs, so 19 pairs of sneakers that I have to make something different for. So it's it's a challenge. It's a lot, but it's kind of a fun challenge. So now that I know how to do it, and I know how to veneer it, and I know what I can do and can't do, and different things, it's. It's really fun. It's exciting. So, so that's what I do now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's like your um, time frame, like start to finish when you have a new project? Like how long does it usually take? So, deadlines are crazy. So right now we're working toward. So let's see. I want to say it's almost a year. I mean, and we're working a year. Well, not a year. I take that back. We're working a year in advance, so just about. But in terms of timing and when I actually need to hand my artwork off, <laughs> happens very quickly. So we're working on probably three seasons at a time because we'll be working on, so let's just say now that I'm working on fall 21, we're also working on holiday 21. But then I'm getting samples of summer 20, or I don't know. So it's just there's so many overlapping projects. So I'm like, 
I should know the timeline. I don't even know because it seems like we have all this time and then I have to get everything in in a week. So it's, and that's what I'm doing, right? <laughs> so I actually got to step out because it's crazy. It's crazy time at work right now, but I have, yeah, it's almost like I feel like it's finals week is kind of what you can compare it to. It's just, you're so stressed, you have a lot going on, you have to hand off, you have to also comment on samples that are coming in, make sure everything's looking good, and then it's pretty, it's pretty wild. So, yeah, it's definitely stressful, but, but fun. So, in terms of timing, that part, it's like I don't even know anymore because I just have to keep going <laughs> very quickly. So now that I'm just, so when I leave here, I have to make sure everything is in for what I'm submitting for my fall 21 stuff, and then I have to go directly into just working on and creating holiday. So there's no real break in between. Our calendars are always overlapping, so you're kind of constantly creating. So this is my break. <laughs> we appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, yeah. It was a lot of visual stuff. And if you guys have any more questions, I would love to answer questions because this is kind of it right now. Yeah. So, like, when working with artists on uh, collaborations, uh -huh. um, how do you go about creating patterns for that? Do they just kind of hand you? their vision that they feel like should work for Congress, or do you have more of like a back and forth? And like There's a... definitely a conversation. So they'll submit what they want, and if it's not brand appropriate, we'll kind of not reject it. We just have to kind of work with them to make it something that's appropriate for us and appropriate for them. So there's definitely a lot of collaboration between them, us. I mean, I wouldn't directly work with these people, but the directors of those categories sit face to face. So they'll come into the office, we'll kind of I know for Miley, they built out a little studio for her and we're, we're able to kind of partner with her. So it's almost giving her all the tools and all the things that, that we're comfortable using or that's true to Converse DNA and what, what is appropriate for us and then she can put her spin on it. So every collaborator is different. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of partnership back and forth and then Sometimes it's, you know, the collaborator will want something and they're like, mm, this is really what I want. And we're like, okay, all right, that works. Sometimes it's a little not us, but that's okay because it's them and it works. And, yeah. Do you ever get, I because mean, I know working with prints can be kind of iffy sometimes, especially with footwear. Do you ever get a sample where you think it's going to come in a specific way and it doesn't? Oh, How do you go about handling mm -hmm. that? So this... Especially in footwear, because it's a lot different. I, when I was doing apparel print, I would just make the print and create the artwork. They send it out kind of specify materials and everything else. I would have to kind of think about it just because of limitations and on different materials. Everything is kind of, you know, it, it applies to that. So I would, I would have to be mindful of it, but not as much as now footwear. So footwear, and it's... It's awesome because it's so creative, but it's a lot to think about. So it's thinking about the base material, what you can print on, how you're printing. So it's like, it's almost once a, it's like, yeah, anything that's within my graphics brief, I can kind of call all that stuff out on. So I, it's very creative because it feels like I'm also, I'm, well, veneering the shoe basically, but yeah, it definitely now <laughs> gotten some stuff back. I'm like, hmm. Or you, you realize it's also the way in terms of working and how you kind of tech pack your things to submit to the factory and what works best. So it's also a learning curve too of, you know, what they're understanding or how they're interpreting things. So it's kind of nice. So when I got my first, nothing's been that crazy, but just you'll, I'll also think it's going to be this way and then it's not the way at all. I'm like, oh, okay, shoot, but also learning. So we're able to sample stuff and we're able to see different executions and how things look and yeah so but there is that back and forth but luckily there's so much footwear we have so many things to kind of resource and look back on so it's kind of easier to find I'm like you know I'll kind of look through everything and say okay you know that's a technique I want to use or just we have so many books and things to look through so it's kind of we do have the resources, which is good. Oh. Mm -hmm.
What types of programs do you use to create the, the prints? Is it all digital or do you do any traditional form? Or? I still, I do both. Drawing is a little bit, it's rare these days. <laughs> Not rare, I still do it, but just in terms of time and the way we need to execute things, just doing it digitally is so much faster, so it's a bit more efficient. Um, Photoshop and Illustrator, all day. When I was at, I learned net graphics when I was in college. I don't even know if that exists anymore, but I learned that in college when I went to coach Photoshop and Illustrator is what we used, and then um, we also learned Point Array, so I learned that for a bit, that program, but really just, and now Photoshop and Illustrator. Good programs to know. <laughs> Anybody else? Can I ask a couple questions, yes, Christina? Please. So I have two about the working um, within or under uh, the creative direction that you mentioned. So um, you mentioned that the creative direction kind of sets out the theme and any seasonal trends to keep in mind, colors, etc. cetera. So um, have you ever seen a project that deviates from that or has to pivot unexpectedly? Mm -hmm. um, and like, what does that look like and how do you handle it? And how does that kind of trickle down to you and your partners? I think, yeah. That happens all the time. So, yes. And I think just being able to pivot all the time is what you should always be fine. Everything is Everything changes so fast. It's constantly changing. There's stuff that, you know, we've worked on that has... So we'll take the creative direction and then just some trend things that I kind of, you know, I use WGSN and there's other trend things that I look into, but just in case to pulse check just to kind of see what's going on, I'll utilize that and then, um, but internally sometimes something will be so connected to something and you know this is the direction we're going, but then you know down, down the line it will kind of, you know, something will happen and people are talking and you don't know who's talking to who, but then in a matter of seconds they're like, oh, it's actually going to be this, and you're like, hey, what? Okay, so then it can completely change. So I've, you know, worked on projects where I've had packs and you're working on so many things and so much design effort and time and tech packing and blood, sweat, and tears go into this thing. And it's like all start you're like, okay, this is my, my thing, it's my baby at this point. And then, you know, you get samples back and then it all drops and you're like, oh, all right, and then you do it again, and then you do it again. So it's constantly, things are changing, and especially when you're working and you're getting closer to market and people are getting feedback and, you know, buyers come in or merchandising gets new information and, you know, there's just so many things that are happening. So, you know, you do reach a point where you can't do anything else, but then you also kind of have to go with the flow of kind of what's happening as you, as things kind of, you know, get closer to the time when you need to, to actually develop stuff, but then yeah, you gotta hit go at some point, so you gotta be confident in what you're doing. But I've seen it, yeah, tie completely to the direction and then be this other thing where I'm like, well, I could have done anything, man. <laughs> like, it didn't even really matter. But <laughs> you obviously try to stay as close as you can, but there's a lot of a lot of factors involved in sure. design. Sure, yeah, no, that makes sense. Very subjective. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So my second question about that is um, the opposite scenario, where the creative direction <coughs> plays, right? Everybody buys in, you're rolling with it, it's great, whatever, mm -hmm. except you hate it. Yeah. It does not align with your aesthetic and yeah. your style. <laughs> what does that look like? What does that feel like? That's a, it's, hard, it's a harder sell, for sure. Um, it's also, I've, I don't think, I mean, I've definitely worked on stuff that's not my aesthetic, you have to remember, obviously, it's consumer-led direction of, you know, not everything we're going to do is something that, you know, we would wear. And so it is just kind of having that mindset of just what you're doing. Obviously, I want everything to, to be great, but it might not be my style. So it's an interesting, it is an interesting thing to kind of do and create. You just have to be 
really honed in on your consumer. So it's just making sure you know them, knowing who you're designing for, who you're targeting. But yeah, I've definitely, at least for print stuff, and I kind of, I kind of stopped working like this just because of that reason, that I've presented a lot of ideas. And on the board, it's like I always want to show a breadth of options, stuff to choose from, maybe mixing and matching some things, and then it'll be the one that I'm like, oh, like, I wish I didn't put it on the board, but that's the one that'll get picked. I'm like, all right, okay, we're going to go with that. <laughs> if you see something that I don't see, fine, we'll go for it. But, yeah, it happens. Yeah. And it's definitely, I, I can't really hide things on my face sometimes. I'm like, <laughs> really? Okay, all right. But, yeah, yeah, that yeah. definitely happens. <laughs> I was just wondering what advice you would have for like alums or seniors for applying to jobs in a career field like this. Like, what do you think they're looking for? What would you suggest? What are you What are you studying? Uh, I do fashion merchandising, but I have a studio art minor. Okay. So, um, God, I'm like I don't even know now. I think just a strong portfolio. I think obviously, I think just being yourself. You're. I'm sure you're going to apply to companies that that you are passionate about and that you're excited to be a part of. And I think companies are just looking for eager, excited candidates to potentially work work for them. So it's kind of a this mutual thing and I think, you know, with I don't I mean now it's you know, especially at Converse, it's like the youth is our, you know, our consumer and we get really excited about young people and just understanding and the consumer mindset and we have a lot of that kind of, you know, so there's definitely, um, yeah, I think just places who are going to be really excited to have you as, you know, someone to apply for that, for that place. So, can I answer your question? Yeah. 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 <laughs> So what does a day in the life look like? <laughs> well, it's like, I'll give you a good day. Um, no, today, I'll tell you about today. So um, I get into the office. I really, the Converse has such a, it's, it's a really fun place to work. So it has a great vibe and everybody is so easy going. So it is really fun. I love, I've never, I mean, I, not that I've never, but it's kind of just, it's almost like, being in college, like you, you're kind of on a campus, and you have all your people, and you know we have our little barista, and we have free coffee, and it's cute. So there's definitely this like it's fun, we, you know, and they have pool and stuff, so you can kind of relax, and that's just the type of atmosphere, which it's nice because you can kind of break away for a little bit and and kind of do your thing, which is cool. Um, but let's see, today I got into the office and I had to update a bunch of my tech packs <laughs> and so I'm getting a lot of stuff out now which I have to keep doing. Um, but yeah, no, I, I mean typically I'll come in um, depending on kind of what deliverable is needed. I'll either be designing or, so when I say tech packing, that's kind of, it's like once the design is finished I'll do a layout within the, the footwear. So I'll take the silhouette that I'm applying it to and then <clears throat> put the print in there and then you're kind of calling out all the specifications. So like what color I want the laces, what material I want the laces, you know, whether things are going to be printed, or are they going to be screen printed, or what type of, um, what type of print, or you know, am I going to do patches, or certain things. So each thing, it takes a lot of time because it's you know, if I have an all repeat, I can set the future about, but if I have an engineered print, I'm setting up engineered specific pages for how the print will be applied to the footwear product. So it's definitely a lot of computer work. So I think that is why you are able to get up and kind of, you gotta stretch and walk around for a minute. And, and then it's a lot of collaborating. It's a lot of meetings. It's a lot of working with your partners and, and just kind of, um, yeah. A lot of talking, a lot of walking. <laughs> um, but then it's also kind of funny because it's a lot of up and down. I sit on the eighth floor. My whole team sits on the sixth floor. So it's definitely it's a good and a bad thing because everyone's down there. So if something changes, I don't hear it maybe until a little too late that I'm like, oh, I wish I just knew that that happened because sometimes we don't have phones in the office, which is a bit. 
I mean, we used to have phones, and I love having a phone. I'm like, hello, like it, it's just a little bit easier. Um, but we don't have that in this office, so it's a lot of walking up and down the stairs. So I do get a bit of a workout. We also have a gym, which is nice. So I can go to the gym at lunch. <laughs> it's it's good. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, depending on if it's too busy or not, yeah, I can do I can do that. So I can go to the gym, come back, design. I go to meetings, and then yeah, it's pretty good gig. I'm not gonna lie, I do like it a lot. It's great. Yeah. Um, do you think you could uh, tell us what's up here yeah, and maybe so, pass them around? Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, I can pass stuff. So these are, I mean, these are kind of old at this point, but I brought a bunch of stuff that I had just done at Coach. So kind of just things, um, there's some plaids that I worked on. I mean, there's some outlet stuff here. Some of this stuff went into market and some of it didn't, but... I, like typically how we'll work in repeat and then we'll recolor artwork so we'll show you know different color options or different color ways of prints or you know different executions of a potential animal <clears throat> and how we want to kind of translate that different florals so these were just some some prints that I had still at my house so some things okay some stuff you guys want to and I also have, yeah, these are a few things from Coach. These are just some. But then I have a few hand painted things, which I'll pass around. Just be a little bit more careful with those guys. Yeah, these are some animals. But this is what I did in college. <laughs> so this, I the long nights of studios, which this is what I thought. So obviously now this is how I'm working, but this is how I thought it was actually going to be. I'm like, I'm going to just sit there and I'm going to draw everything by hand and I'm going to paint it and it's going to be amazing, but nope. So, so these are from college, which is now almost 12 years ago. So, but yeah. So then this, so these are in repeat, or just one repeat cell that then we were able to take, scan, and then put into a CAD program and clean on the computer and um, put into repeat. So that ended up being wallpaper and then I think I ended up doing kind of a bedding design with that one. But this one. So there's definitely no time to work like that <laughs> in the industry now. I'm sure if that was your main focus, but unfortunately, unless I really get ahead of it, because I have done some hand-painted stuff, so I do miss using gouache and drawing and being able to, to work like that. But Was there ever an opportunity to kind of meld the two, so to do something yeah. by hand and then yeah. bring it in? Yeah. Do you do any of that? I do, yeah. I just have to be mindful of it because you can kind of get just so carried away with what you're doing and yeah. doing stuff on the computer it's so fast right and, and then but i just did a collection and it's all hand drawn so it does feel good to get back to it i'm like okay you know what i can't i'm not going to do this and then yeah so just kind of making the mental note of taking the time to do it it's just allotting right. yourself that time to actually be able to to work like that. But yeah. So yeah, because even recently I've been hand painting. I just have to do it on the side and, mm -hmm. and it might not be right for that season, but it's kind of like I have a little collection to the side of things that I can pull in a pinch if I need it. So that's helpful too. Yeah. Anybody have any other questions while these pieces are circulating? So what do you think is next, Christina? Are you, are you in your role for the long haul? Do you see yourself going anywhere else within Converse? I think there's always the possibility. I like that we are owned by Nike. <laughs> That's always something I back of mind think about. I love being here my family's here so that part's nice it's kind of i was in new york for a while doing my thing for about 
seven, eight years, and then, so being closer to family school, but then my brother just moved to LA, and now my mom's like, I don't know, maybe we'll go to the West Coast too. So I'm like, okay, fine. Um, but I think Nike potentially, but right now, internally what I'm doing, I love it. So it's been That's pretty great. new, the stuff that I'm doing now, it obviously isn't in the market yet, so I, it's like you kind of want to wait too to just totally. see your stuff. Yeah. So. I think that will be yeah. really exciting. Yeah. But yeah. I need a print designer under me, so thank you guys want to apply in the future. Thank you. beautiful and we don't want to wreck it. Now it's like vintage at this point. I'm like this is old. Oh my god, I haven't done stuff like this in a long time. But um but yeah, I, I did a pair of there's a like a zebra, but yeah we don't do a lot of green and green is my favorite color. So at least you can do your own thing and I'm like, oh I can I'll just pick a color and I'll make these fine. So so yeah, that part of the website is fun. But yeah sneakers so when is this exciting favorite one? When, is, when are we going to see it? So, let's see. So that... Oh, it feels like never. Um, so I guess some stuff is going to start coming out holiday time? Yeah. Is 20? Yeah, so I guess around the holidays. Yeah. But when you are so excited about stuff and you see it and there's so many things that I'm like, oh, I want those now. And, or I even have a pair of, at my desk and I'm like, I want to wear those now. <laughs> I have to wait. So that part, it's annoying. <laughs> this was fun. I hope it wasn't boring. <laughs> never, never, never. <laughs> never. Any last questions, so, guys? Do you get to keep the shoes that you design? Yeah, some stuff. I mean, if there's pairs internally and you know I love them, then yes. Or I'll buy them. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Well, Christina, thank you so much. It was great to hear about your career. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This really filled in, I think, some gaps about... Um, color and textile forecasting that we've been talking about so and seeing it in action is always great so thank you for coming to campus especially amidst this an interesting climate that we're in right now we appreciate it um like climate and this climate yeah 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 either way right exactly um awesome well thank you so much so guys if you didn't sign the attendance sheet make sure that you do that and then otherwise have an amazing spring break and take good care of yourselves and be careful traveling and i'll see you on the 23rd